now, the general weather around Alaska. Welcome everyone to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan coming to you from the National Weather Service in Alaska region on this Saturday, July 5th, 2025. We have a lot to talk about on this Saturday and the uh, weather related headlines. First, red flag warnings and heat advisories continue across the interior. We've seen temperatures as warm as 85 to near 90 degrees, but that's gonna begin to break down as we uh, head into early next week, most notably. Noctilucent clouds were spotted above Anchorage early this Saturday morning. I stepped out and took a look and got a couple pictures I'll show you. Rain and breezy front moving across the Gulf as we go through Sunday into Monday. That'll spread into the Panhandle, bringing more rain along the Gulf Coast and Panhandle with a couple waves of energy helping to feed that, especially across southeast Alaska. Still looks like a big cool down is going to take place across the northern mainland that is currently occupied by that big warm ridge that's sitting in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. That ridge is breaking down. It'll start to do so on Sunday, and that'll be followed by the cold front later Monday and into Tuesday. So no attack up there. Hazy sunshine, hot, 86 degrees as of three o'clock in the afternoon. Nanana dealing with a number of wildfires in the vicinity. One of the complexes there, I'm sure, really contributing to this smoky haze at 82 degrees. If it wasn't for that smoke and haze, temperatures would be up near 90 there. Kodiak is getting some rain fog uh, as a result of that front that's going to be pushing up into the Gulf. Only 52 degrees there. And Pelican is uh, seeing partly sunny skies, 59, but some rain will be moving in there, especially Sunday and for Monday. So. Uh, areas of the state have seen some sunshine uh, this weekend and warm temperatures, other places so-so. Well, I, I had a hunch to take a look because there has been over the past week across northern Europe quite a few sightings of noctilucent clouds. And this is the noctilucent cloud season typically runs from Memorial Day weekend up through about mid-August. Well, our problem in Alaska to see them around the solstice in early July is that we just still have too much daylight. We never get the sun much below six degrees below the horizon at Anchorage's latitude. Well, the sun angle at that time was six degrees below the horizon and it was just enough to still catch these clouds. These are the normal, what we call tropospheric clouds, the no normal mid and high level clouds we see in the everyday atmosphere. These are 50 miles above the surface in the mesosphere, and these clouds form on particles left by meteors entering the upper atmosphere and rocket exhaust. And rocket exhaust has actually contributed to the formation of these clouds now more frequently because we have so many more rockets launching satellites and doing other things. So uh, noctilucent clouds will probably become something uh, much more frequent than in the distant past. And here's another shot. They're very distinctive. These are the tropospheric clouds. You're maybe cirrocumulus at about 30,000 feet. These are 50 miles up. If we can give it another couple few weeks, latter half of July, if we have another display uh, available, the sun angle will be a bit lower, which would enhance the contrast of these clouds. They often have a bluish white or silvery bluish white appearance. So this is pretty good though, considering uh, where we're at right now with our Earth-Sun geometry below the horizon for this time of year in southern Alaska. And looking at what we got going on, we still have red flag warnings until 1 a.m. this Sunday morning. Those could be extended during the day Sunday, so you want to stay tuned to later forecasts, but at least for now, till 1 a.m. That includes Yukon Flats, higher terrain around Fairbanks, westward through Bettles, uh, Alaka Ket, and uh, Huslia. Also the area around Delta Junction west through Healy and Wonder Lake on the north side of the Alaska Range, all under uh, red flag warnings for critical fire weather conditions. We have heat, we have low humidity, some breeziness in spots, and isolated thunderstorms that could initiate new fire starts due to lightning strikes. And I don't have to mention, don't even think about campfires, anything that could throw a spark, fireworks, all that's been canceled, you know, the burning permits, burn bans everywhere across the state because of these conditions. And those extend down into South Central as well. And we've had heat advisories that are going to remain in effect through 10 p.m. Sunday evening for uh, areas of the lower middle 
uh, Tanana Valley, Middle Yukon, up until the western central Brooks Range North Slope surrounding Kotzebue Sound and even out into the uh, Seward Peninsula. In fact, Golovin had a temperature up near 80 degrees this afternoon, at least 76 at Nome as of mid-afternoon, so some very warm temperatures. And I have to thank the folks at the Alaska Interagency Coordination Center there, the fire weather forecasters, Heidi and Jacob. They've been doing an outstanding job each day uh, sending out an update on the expected fire weather conditions. And so as the forecast for Sunday is weather, we'll be moderating on Sunday in the southern half of the state, little cooler temperatures, slightly higher humidities. So that'll tend to reduce the fire threat just a little bit to start. There are also some showers expected mostly south and west of the Alaska range and thunderstorms could continue to present a threat of new uh, ignitions. The northern interior will stay hot and dry yet on Sunday with very high fire danger. However, that upper ridge is going to begin to break down on Sunday, which will allow for a cold front to sweep across that area later Monday into Tuesday. And then precipitation is likely for many areas of the state, but it's, the coverage isn't going to be enough to really snuff out the fire danger. And one area where we will see more in the way of cloudy skies, cooler temperatures and wet conditions will be along the Gulf Coast into the panhandle. You're going to get some soaking rains here uh, coming up for early next week. But here, the grass adjective, we have very high to extreme fire danger, basically the northern half of the mainland that extends north of the Alaska Range all the way up into the North Slope and west toward the Chukchi uh, Sea coastline. And then where we look at spruce, this time of year spruce is the greatest carrier of fire really can drive a fire. You have the Yukon Flats areas all the way westward to places like around Huslia and uh, west of Tanana. So very high to extreme fire danger in those regions. This is why this area has the red flag warning in effect. So looking at the satellite imagery, we have generally clearer skies up this way except for the smoke and haze as a result of the active fires. That's one thing. Certain areas around these active fires, we're seeing quite a bit of smoke and some of that is being transported. So that's gonna reduce visibility and make for poor air quality. If you have any issues, respiratory issues, uh, it could be uh, a rough go for a while until these uh, fires can at least begin to diminish or that smoke get cleared out. And looking at what we have coming up here, Here's the frontal system. There's an area of low pressure here. That's gonna pull this moisture northeastward and eastward along the Gulf Coast into the Panhandle Sunday and for Monday. The circulation around this massive mid and upper level ridge easterly flow here across the southern uh, mainland. And that's what could uh, force some showers and isolated thunderstorms uh, to redevelop uh, again on Sunday. So the weather map, late tonight, early Sunday morning, here's the week low uh, entering Shelikoff Strait, south end of Kodiak Island with the occluded front. Gonna push up against the Gulf Coast into the Panhandle, bringing areas of rain or rain showers and small craft conditions. Here we have a thermal low that's sitting there in the interior because of the warm temperatures. And then to the west, there's an area of low pressure passing south of the Aleutians by Sunday afternoon. Low just kind of sits there around Shelikoff Strait, uh, Kodiak Island with the front weakening, but again, providing some breezy conditions, mainly small craft conditions. And, and again, areas of rain or rain showers from the Panhandle all along the Gulf Coast. We could see a scattering of showers and some thunderstorms, especially the southern half of the mainland and that upper level high will begin to break down. Here comes that cold front in off the Arctic Ocean. This low will continue eastward and eventually will play into the weather by midweek. But by later Monday afternoon and evening, that cold front should push south of the Brooks Range. Uh, we're still looking at a lingering trough, another little wave of low pressure rotating up that could enhance some of the rain or showers across the southern panhandle Monday afternoon and evening. And by Tuesday, the front doesn't really advance too terribly far south. It kind of stalls, begins to stall out, but we do have much cooler temperatures across the northern half of the mainland, especially along the Brooks Range, North Slope, and Arctic Coast. There could even be a little rain-snow mix here along the eastern Brooks Range uh, as we go into Tuesday morning and uh, Tuesday during the day. And then this low is going to come up and assume a position very similar to where the low is right now. That'll move up toward uh, Shelikoff Strait, south side there of Kodiak Island by Wednesday, and that actually have a bit more wind 
and rain than the last one. So this could have another bit of a punch coming up for midweek. Temperature wise, warmest readings long north of the uh, Yukon River up to uh, the south slopes of the Brooks Range, low temperatures in the 50s to near 60. Elsewhere, we see 50s with cloud cover and some showers developing, spreading inland to the Panhandle by Sunday morning and afternoon. Out here along uh, the Arctic coast, we are looking at lows in the some 30s up there, Utkiadvik, 40s along the immediate coastline and certainly out along the Aleutians. Highs though, Sunday afternoon, we still have readings that could get up to the mid, maybe upper 80s along and south of the Brooks Range, along and north of the Yukon River. Maybe a little cooler here because of some cloud cover and scattered showers across the southern uh, south central interior and then along the Gulf Coast as that front just kind of works its way north and eastward. It's going to have more cloud cover and some rain or showers to deal with so that'll keep temperatures down as well. And on Monday morning, similarly, we're looking at lows generally low mid 50s panhandle upper 40s to around 50 interior south central south of the Alaska range. Still some 50s along uh, the Yukon River up to the south slopes of the Brooks Range. Cooling down though, starting to see some temperatures at freezing there along the Beaufort Sea coast as that colder air begins to come southward. And then Monday afternoon will be interesting because there'll be quite a contrast as that cold front is just approaching the spine of the Brooks Range. Before it does though, it may squeak out High temperatures still uh, 70s to maybe near 80 degrees uh, along the south slopes of the Brooks Range and certainly Yukon Flats, 83 forecast high for Fort Yukon. And south central areas with some cloud cover and showers keeping readings mainly in the 60s. Same thing, a little cooler in the Panhandle, only 50s in some areas there in our channels on Monday afternoon. So here's the six to 10 day temperature outlook for July 11th through the 15th, taking us up to mid month. Temperatures are gonna be cooler than normal in all likelihood with the greatest uh, probability being here across the Southeast mainland along the Elkan border, Northway to Yakutat, and then Northern and Central Panhandle may certainly end up cooler than normal and that even extending out along the west coast and the Alaska Peninsula, which would indicate a cooler troughier pattern over much of the state. And then uh, precipitation wise, precipitation, the best chance for precipitation average above normal, southeast mainland in through the panhandle because with this kind of pattern, we do anticipate occasional low pressure systems and fronts rotating up into the Gulf, bringing rounds of some rain or rain showers. So this pattern, uh, is going to look to shift out from the, the, the excessive heat that we've seen across the central and northern areas of the mainland. That's going to go away next week and into uh, the following weekend. So get ready for that change coming up as we approach mid-month.